Excellences, please be kind and uh, take your seats so that we can get started. A simple good morning doesn't really help. <laughs> Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a pleasure to welcome you to this ECOSOC special event on multi-stakeholder partnerships, making them work for the post-2015 development agenda. And this meeting is intended as a contribution to the implementation of this new agenda. Multi-stakeholder partnerships comprising government, the private sector and philanthropic community, civil society and academia will be central for implementation of the new development agenda. The Council, the ECOSOC, has for a number of years placed increased emphasis on ways in which to mobilize such partnerships in support of the international development agenda. We must continue to expand this important collaboration as we transition to a new set of development goals as this is known to you. It will be important to consider how best to channel the valuable contributions and expertise of stakeholders in advancing the implementation of the new Sustainable Development Goals and the outcome of future conferences and summits. Distinguished participants, the last two decades have seen a mushrooming of multi-stakeholder partnerships. They have increasingly become an integral part of the UN's work. These partnerships are voluntary by nature and they are rarely the same. They can have different structures and characteristics and employ different monitoring and review mechanisms. Some have reporting requirements, while others do not. As we look for new and innovative ways in which to harness the potential benefits of multi-stakeholder partnerships, we have to ask ourselves how such partnerships should look like and how to best link them to the post-2015 development agenda. Partnerships are important on a global level, but it can be vital making them work on a national level. For what really counts and what is noticed by the citizens of the member countries happens on the national level. Let me point out that we need review mechanisms which have to be set up in a voluntary way. The lack of review mechanisms can make it difficult to assess if partnerships are indeed delivering results. Creating a platform for review could provide governments and the wider international community with the opportunity to take stock of the role, trends, innovations and financing of voluntary multi-stakeholder partnerships and their contribution to advancing international development. We shall therefore strive for putting into place mechanisms that will help to assess progress made. However, let me also point out that in order to make things work, it is crucial to avoid to have too many different implementation and review mechanisms uh, and uh, which would result in a loss of oversight and therefore turn out to be counterproductive. Only if we succeed here will it be possible to have a wide range of stakeholders on board for the 15 years that lie ahead of us starting on the 1st of January 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, we have here with us today distinguished panelists who I'm sure will provide us with valuable insights and perspectives into many of the issues that I have mentioned so far. Our first discussion will focus on ways to align multi-stakeholder partnerships with the post-2015 development agenda and where they should be reviewed. In the second panel, we will hear representatives describe a variety of partnership models 
that have worked, including ways in which they have been reviewed and evaluated. The lessons learned could provide us with possible approaches for partnership review after 2015, including elements that could be considered for a possible framework. Our moderator for the first panel is Mr. Michael Schank, Director of Media Strategy at Climate Nexus. He is a former columnist of, for the Washington Post and currently a columnist for US News and World Report. And I now give him the floor to commence the first panel discussion on aligning partnerships with the post-2015 development agenda. How should it be done and where could they be reviewed? And uh, Mr. Schenk will also present the panelists to you and introduce the panelists to you. So, Mr. Schenk, Michael, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks to the ECOSOC team for putting this conversation together. Happy Friday. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a conversation about partnerships. Let me give a quick overview of some analysis that's already been done. There are several papers out there on multi-stakeholder partnership, what works, what doesn't, what criteria are necessary. I want to give a quick overview and then I'll introduce the three panelists today. So there are three types of partnerships. Service provision, implementation is one. Knowledge transfer, two. And three, standard setting. So most of the global partnerships can fit into one of those three categories. Are they working? We'll take a look. There was a survey of several hundred global partnerships. Out of that survey, 38% had no activities whatsoever. 26% had some activities, but they didn't align with the stated goals. 12%, there was a partial match. And only 24%, or a quarter, had all of the output aligning directly with the stated goals. So clearly we have some work to do. I'm gonna suggest that the following five A's are necessary essential building blocks, and this draws heavily from the International Civil Society Center's report on MSPs, multi-stakeholder partnerships. That appreciative inquiry is necessary to bring all parties to the table. What do I mean by that? In appreciative inquiry, making sure you have common vision, common goals, that's critical. If you don't get it at the beginning, you're gonna derail pretty quickly. All parties to the table, why is that necessary? Well, if someone is left from the table, not included in the table, if you don't achieve inclusiveness, they will rabble rouse outside the room that you have not let them in. So appreciative inquiry to make sure all parties are at the table. And then accountable aims and assets. We talked a lot about accountability, but ensuring transparency, monitoring and evaluation. And then in aims, are there concrete goals? Are they measurable? Are they specific? Assets, do we have sufficient financial resources? human resources, and as some of the panelists will illuminate today, critical leadership at the top level. If you get those five A's, you've got the essential building blocks. But there's more. As one of the panelists will identify, partnerships are like dating, and I'll just expand on that. Dispute resolution mechanisms are critical. Partnerships are idealized, but not often integrating. My PhD was in conflict analysis, conflict resolution, and just like dating, Dealing with conflict is critical. It will come up in the partnership, and unless you've set up dispute resolution mechanisms in the beginning, when conflict comes up, you haven't created capacity to deal with it. Clear communication, legitimacy, and trust building. Oftentimes, we build trust at the beginning with a new partnership, and then we fail to continually and continuously build trust throughout. So no surprise, halfway through or three quarters of the way through, trust drops out, legitimacy drops out. We have to be mindful of that throughout the entire process. And then, just like in relationship, strong facilitation throughout the whole process. We cannot let that container get porous or leaky, facilitating a tight container for that partnership through the entirety of the concrete aims and measurable goals. Lastly, around institutionalization, a strong mandate helps, but also binding rules with external monitoring. Now, much of what I've lifted up is in the report by the International Civil Society Center with NGOs that you're familiar with, Oxfam and others. I encourage you to look at that. That will ensure the sustainability of the Sustainable Development Goals. We'll get into in the Q&A, 
conversations about specific recommendations. My instruction from the ECHOSOC team is to really do a deep dive in where and what role can ECHOSOC play. So I'm very keen in the Q&A to get to conversations about task managers. Is it worth in the UN system making sure every agency, every committee, every commission has a task manager and kind of a meta partnership hub to make sure these SDGs get implemented? And ECHOSOC can be a home for a conversation about the models and lessons learned and pilot projects. So with that, let's begin. We'll begin with Dr. Klaus Leisinger, followed by Mr. Charles Badenacht, and followed by Dr. Hasfina Rucado. Dr. Klaus Leisinger is the founder and president of the Global Values Alliance. He'll speak to that and some of the work they're doing. Mr. Charles Badenacht is the vice president for global advocacy at World Vision. And Dr. Hasfina Rucado is a founder and executive director for the Center for African Development Solutions. Dr. Klaus Leisinger, the floor is yours. Thank you.